Lately I've been feeling things change We've been working hard, no sleep, get it every day And I swear that we ain't stopping till we pay Yeah, the pressure on, gotta make it work, triple play, yeah This is Triple Play Fantasy Basketball Week 22. It's maybe... I don't know about you. It's week 22. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And Doc is always good for a little song on the side that he makes up on the fly. Wait, could... no, wait, I, wait, do you actually not know that song? That is, that's the story of our relationship. You, you say don't know 22 don't by know. Taylor Swift. No, Gosh. sorry. Gosh. Missed that one. Missed that one on the playlist. All right, James, I'm going to just send you all of the songs that you have. And Alice in Chains last week, 22 by Taylor Swift. I think you're just uncultured. I think that's what it is. I think if we play in a championship, we may never, ever, ever get back together because you're going to be crying. Out of curiosity, because James is a lock to win the championship or to get in the championship. You heard it first. I'm going to take back what I said. He is the favorite. (laughs) Who are you guys rooting for? Not who you think would win. James is the favorite. Who would, if me and James are playing each other, and Keith, I know you watch these videos. I want you to comment. Who would you want to win, me or James? I mean, who's been helping him all season? You know what I mean? It's your boy. It's it's me providing comedic (laughs) relief. I'm helping extend lives here. Yeah. Um, So it's that time of year where – you cut anybody who's in play. If you've made it this far, that means you are uh, in the top of your league. You're in the playoffs in the final couple of weeks. This week's schedule is much different from last week's, which was way more balanced. We see heavy games on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday. You might have to make a decision on your bench on who you're going to be, you know, a healthy DMP. Um, whereas uh, we, See on Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday with games of four, two, and three, which it, you got you got to take a long look at your schedule upcoming and see who maybe you know those guys that you have to bench on a Monday, Wednesday, and a Friday, and then picking up some lesser skill or lesser talented fantasy wise players for that Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday round. Um, to see if you can get some extra games. Those two teams that play those days are the Bucks and the Pels. The Bucks, I don't know what you can really find and what's really going to benefit you. You know, Malik whether you Beasley. get lucky. What's up? Maybe I said maybe Malik Beasley. Yeah, maybe if Malik Beasley's there. He's, he's definitely a better option than um, who I was going to mention, which is Pat Bev or like Pat Connington, the Pats <laughs> off the bench. I don't know what you're going to get there. Uh, the Pels are more of a team under the microscope because Brandon Ingram has having an injury. So thus other players are going to get some more usage and some more minutes, you know, whether that's Najee Marshall, whether that's Jose Alvarado, who we'll talk about, whether that's Larry Nance Jr. Um, but Jordan Hawkins comes back to life. You know, something is better than nothing though. And like, yeah, you might have to cut terms with a player that's, you know, fringe, he should be on, he should be rostered in every league. And you might have to just cut ties with that player so you can get some extra statistics and extra games in the week. So this is definitely a manager's uh, week. This is the part where the, the casuals get, you know, they get faded out. You know, I don't Yeah, basketball, it's like so hard. I would have to keep up with it every day. I mean. You don't get to the yeah. finals, though, if you're not the grit and grind era of Memphis Grizzlies. Yeah. Unless you're playing in a league with a bunch of bums. Uh, Mavs and Kings on Monday, Tuesday, they play this week. But again, you know, there's, it's heavy on Monday. Uh, okay. If you're a Luka owner and you're still kicking around, the other the supporting cast stepped up because he only had two games this past week. But he's playing lights out. He's playing I wonder, better. Uh, I wonder how old that pick is of Luka. He looks kind of fat. I mean, he always kind of has a little pudge. But, yeah, it's definitely a dated uh, picture. Shout out Swiper Fox. He's been helping carry my my team all year long. Hopefully he can continue that. Um, Peyton Pritchard is Pritchard. in the last five games averaging 35 minutes a game. And he's been the biggest, maybe the biggest pickup in the past couple of weeks. We saw last week he increased from 34% to 39. So he might still be out there in 60% of leagues, but 18 
3.5 and eight assists, 3.6 threes. Um, he's been on a heater, especially when he plays Detroit. When he plays Detroit, uh, he can give you a 20 ball, 23 ball, hit nine threes in those two games in the last week. Um, so Peyton Pritchard is, you know, the biggest fantasy pickup. Pick we don't st- – Holiday hasn't been playing. Um, Jalen Brown missed the game. So with that comes some increased usage. And um, shout out the people that went out and picked him up. I definitely wasn't that guy. I mean, I was, and I saw him play in person last Sunday. You know, sometimes the eye test can say it all, and that's if somebody's tough or not. And I was like, wow, he got the respect from me. Not saying that means a lot, but against the Wizards, 14 points, 13 sure assists, 6 of 15 from the field, 2 of 5 from 3. I will say this is probably about the best five-game stretch you could have, playing the Pistons twice, the Wizards, and at the Bulls. Granted, mm-hmm. they did play the Bucks one game. But uh, as you'd mentioned, I mean, the Celtics have won the division already. They're in first place. They have a little bit of a cushion. So I think for Jalen Brown that has that ankle injury, for poor Zingas and uh, Al Horford, who they've been resting, Peyton Pritchard is a guy that's playing every game. So the minutes are there, and he's giving you categories galore. You would say 35 minutes a game is it's pretty high, right? Yeah, pr- pretty high. Yeah, but – there are other players that play under Coach Tibbs. Yeah, I was going to uh, say, that's Tib, Tibbs is the exception to the rule. 35 Lord. is not a lot for him. Josh Hart, how many minutes did he play the other night? I think it was like 49. He went to overtime. I think he played like 49, 51. No, he played every – he had played all 48 minutes of a regular game. It's crazy. Every single oh. second. Uh, Miles oh, McBride, though, he's averaging 46 and a half minutes per game in the last week. Uh, 22 points. He's on a heater for three, nearly four game. You're not going to get as many categories, um, but he's also 16% rostered around uh, Yahoo League. So you can find him in a lot more leagues. And, um, you know, he's worth a, he's worth a pickup. It, it's crazy, too, because, you know, he's been a beneficiary of OG going down. The elbow injury flared back up. So before those averaging 45, 46 minutes a game, he was playing 12 against the Kings, 22, 23, 16, 19. And then before that, 46, 47. So there is literally no in-between here. Uh, Miles McBride, I mean, look at you, you look at the screen there. The points is what he's going to get you. Don't expect anything else from a categories league, um, but someone that the volume is there. And, I mean, James, this is a little side note. We start with two guys with alliteration, Pete and Pritchard and Miles McBride. Was that on purpose? Yeah. I think so. <laughs> um, other things of note with New York, uh, Julius Randle, your Julius Randle owner in multiple leagues. It's disappointing because you thought he would have came back for the playoffs. No, no that's that's just James blowing smoke. I mean, it, just, it was just a little shoulder dislocation. But look how much pain he was in when that happened. And Julius Randle's a big guy. Yeah, I, mean, I was. I watched it. It was nasty. You could see. I know James text. Up. James texted me right <laughs> after because he was emotionally uh, going through it. So I rode the precious Achua handcuff for a while, and it worked very well. And it just slowed all the way up because Isaiah Hardstein Pam took over. We can't feature him because he's just too highly rostered. Um, but if you were to stand on top of it, Isaiah Hardstein is playing his best basketball that he's ever played in his career. Thanks, Doc. Yeah, you. It, you know, I should have just had that video up from weeks and weeks ago of when I said that he's good. And uh, before the show, James was trying to tell me that Mitchell Robinson's good when he's a bum. Okay. He's hurt. What can he say for himself when he was playing? Yeah, he's one of my season long bro, goners. He, I'm, bro, I'm he, he lost lives. Lozine. Bro, Mitchell Robinson is made of glass. Okay. All right. Uh, moving on <laughs> to the Steels Court. Uh, I don't know. Participant? He's been in there before. Jose Alvarado. Uh, absolutely not. I mean, he's sneaky. He does yeah. He does the thing where he waits for people to inbound the ball and then, like, runs up and tries to steal it and hangs back. That's sneaky. I, I think it is notable this last game against Miami. It's 17 points, seven boards, six assists, four three-pointers, and that kind of that first game, Brandon Ingram is out, and we know that he's out for, like, two-plus weeks. So he might be the biggest – Beneficiary outside of Trey Murphy, who say that word is untouchable. Again? You can't find him nowhere. Say that. Word and again. he's got the stream week. He's Tuesday, Thursday, um, Saturday. So he's that he's that guy, that streamable guy that's not as good as other players. What was that? Wait, 
Say say that word again. Beneficiary. Yeah. <laughs> Beneficiary. There we go. I mean, okay. I, with with Ingram going down, I mean, think about just how many shots and playing time that does. And just like we saw with Miles McBride, when a player goes down like OG Ananobi, the handcuff isn't always the replacement at that position. You know, teams get mm-hmm. creative with their lineups. Maybe they go a little bit smaller. Maybe they go a little bit bigger. But usually those, you know, sixth, seventh man off the benches, maybe the eighth man, those are the guys that get more minutes. And I think I like what you said about Alvarado. 12 shot attempts last game. I mean, he had 13 the previous three games combined. So, you know, maybe he gets a little bit more aggressive. And maybe look at Najee Marshall as another option. And then Larry Nance Jr. Yeah, I'll I'll take it over because I could tell you're struggling a little bit. Larry Nance Jr., (laughs) Larry Nance Jr., formerly of the Steels Court, uh, Crohn's disease survivor, so we got to give him his flowers on that. But over the last week, I mean, he's he's been pretty well from a category's perspective. 6.5 points per game, 7 rebounds, 2 assists, shooting great from the field, not giving you the steals that we used to saw or that we used to see from him. But he's been playing pretty good minutes, you know, around 20-ish a night, uh, you know, played 23 against Miami last game against uh, Brooklyn on March 19th, 28 minutes. March 15th against the Clippers, 28 minutes for that as well. I think that's kind of always been the bugaboo with Larry Nance is he doesn't play 30-plus minutes consistently, but when he does play, he's giving you some good numbers. You back, James? <laughs> yeah, I'm here. I just wanted to see if you was going to run with it. Oche Agabi. Um, rostered in 6% lead, so this is a deeper league look. But in the last week, 11 and a half, six and a half, two and a half, almost two steals. Um, so if you're in one of those, you know, 14 team leagues, he's somebody that I would think about picking up. Yeah, I mean, the Raptors are going nowhere this year, and I'm not saying, uh, just, a, yeah, I'm not, <laughs> I'm, I'm not saying he's a good player. Uh, Josh Lloyd is known as an Aga, uh, Agbaji hater, but. Uh, he's getting the minutes. He's playing 30 over the last five games. He's contributing somewhat. Toronto doesn't have anybody available, it seems like. Yeah, Yeah. Gary Trent Jr. is the man recently for them, but, like, he's getting a lot of, uh, you know, DMPs randomly, even though he's on a superheater. Speaking of superheaters, Gigi Jackson, who I kind of shot away from, and Doc was more of a, you know, stick with him. Um, I didn't like his inconsistency, but, you know, 35 points on seven threes against Golden State. Kid can just really score the basketball. Yeah. And I mean, Kid, he's the youngest player in the NBA. So. Oh, okay, that, yeah, that's what I was going to say. I was going to say it's <clears throat> not a mention of Gigi Jackson unless you talk about that he's the youngest player in the league. So I'm glad that you're staying true to the brand, James. I, mean, I, also saw, the, I saw the clip, not to cut you off, I saw the clip of uh, Chris Paul – Talking about he, you know, he coached him and, you know, Gigi's on the court calling him coach and splashing three balls in his face. So it's kind of cool um, watching people who a long time ago, these were people I watched in high school and in college, like Chris Paul. And then now he's just like the grandfather of the league. It's, it's cool watching things come full circle. James, basically what you're saying is we're old. Compared to Gigi Jackson, I mean, him. Oh, yeah, yes. <laughs> I mean, we're, we're a little seasoned. We're a little bit of veterans ourselves. We've been around the game for a little bit. Gigi Jackson has been inconsistent for, you know, flashes of the season, but, uh, you know, he's been having more of a solid role. I mean, over the last five games, playing at least 35 minutes in all of them, he played 44 minutes against the Kings. Look at some of those scoring games, 35 points against the Warriors, 22 points at the Kings, 26 against the Hornets. It's not on the screen there. 30 against the Thunder earlier this month. And I don't think it's partially a coincidence. Vince Williams has been out eight, nine games with right knee irritation. They're not really going into more detail. You know, we talk about a different Grizzlies person each week. Jake LaRavia has been questionable for some games with illness. You know, Santi Aldama has kind of had an inconsistent role. And I think Gigi Jackson has really just been that number one point scorer for them. And I mean, yeah, if you got him... Doesn't even matter. That was always his his plague was he was just mostly scoring, but he's given you some rebounds over the last week, which I like. Yeah. Uh, Chris uh, Murray has filled in uh, for the Portland Trailblazers. No one knows what they're doing. If you have a bunch of Blazers on your team, good luck. You may not. Yeah. Be no. No. Fire. Fire. Fire them all off. <laughs> 
Uh, let me a quick rant from me. DeAndre Aiden, Anthony Simons, and Jeremy Grant all out yesterday. Like Portland, just fire yourself into the sun. Yeah, a new a, seems like they have a ton of injuries over there. In no, Scoop. they have a ton of personnel management issues. Yeah, starting with uh, DeAndre Aiden. Um, not a biggest fan, personally. 15% rostered. Uh, Chris Murray uh, is filling it up around the categories. Uh, 15 points, five boards, almost two steals, two threes. Um, he's had some good lines, especially against the Clippers, where he had 21 points and 16, or 17, rather. Um, yeah. Six total threes. I mean, he played 39 minutes yesterday against the Nuggets. That's what happens when you rest three of your best players. Is he the little brother or the big brother? I know they're twins. Uh, I think he's the who, little brother. Who came out first? I don't know. Mm -hmm. If you know, drop it in the comments. I'd I like to know. Uh, but I'm glad he's getting a, um, some time and um, some experience here late in the season. That's I love what, that this is what goes through your mind. That's what bad, that's what bad teams um, do down the stretch. Now, on the other end, pretty good team. Uh, Sacramento has put Keon Ellis in the starting lineup, and uh, it's been resulting in a, a bit of a win streak and, and totals for the Kings, and he's bringing spurts on defense. Uh, in the last week, two steals, almost two blocks. He had five blocks against Memphis as a shooting guard. Um, and categories league, somebody that um, has been slept on, and, I mean, he's, be he's a better option than some other guys that we've been talking about. Uh, finally, we're talking about the great Keon. Uh, from a categories perspective, I was really surprised for that five block game. I mean, he's holding up that hand for how many blocks he had that one game. But you know, then then we see yesterday against the Magic, nineteen points, five rebounds, six assists, two steals, a block. I think this is a guy that's making the most of the minutes that he has. Kevin Herter, you didn't talk about. He has a shoulder dislocation. That's he's probably done for the fantasy season. Yeah, he is so, definitely. So, you know, you, you look at that Kings rotation, then and all of a sudden, I mean, outside of Malik Monk, who went over 11 from the field yesterday, who's really coming off the bench? So I think Keon Ellis could have a, a sure role the rest of the season. I wouldn't say you rely on him for points, but in the categories league, I mean, he's given you something in at least every, every single uh, one itself. Uh, moving on, George's Niang. Uh, Niang. Last two weeks, 14 points, about two threes. Uh, sixteen percent rostered. Um, I got nothing. No, don't pick him up. Are you, what are you talking about? <laughs> All the injuries that the Cavs have. Donovan Mitchell can't catch a break. I'm good. Max Struess has been out. Evan Mobley might return today. The minutes are there, James. The minutes are there. I think I I might even go Sam Merrill all over him, but I'm not. I, oh I, my god, that's I'm, disrespectful. I, I'm just not. I'm not getting either one of those guys um moving on to somebody that has boom or bust potential but now we, we're looking at a two-week sample size uh 10 and 8 uh you hope that he'd be getting more blocks here but we saw his best game of the season last night against boston where he had 24 points nine rebounds and four dimes um the second time having four dimes in the last couple weeks james wiseman what say you yeah, I mean, we talk about handcuffs. He is the handcuff to Jalen Duran. Uh, Jalen Duran missed yep. last game, uh, and and insert James Wiseman. The minutes are directly correlated to when he plays and when he's out. And Stu points. Isaiah Stewart's out for the season, so it is the Duran that you want to keep an eye on. Yeah, and and Detroit's mathematically eliminated, so they probably have more incentive to play him. Uh, but you know, one of the things, obviously, just looking at the field goal percentage, sixty five for the season. 58 over the last week or so. Um, Kate Cunningham is still playing, and, and I like James Wiseman when he plays with Kate. I think he sets him up well. That's probably the best case scenario. I would like to see more blocks from him. I think there's a little bit more inconsistency there. But, uh, you know, if you're watching this video and, uh, you know, they play, I think, 3 o'clock Sunday, keep an eye on Dern's, uh, you know, status. And they're playing a little bit with the lineups because they've had – so many kind of injuries and illnesses like um, the Thompson brother. Like, I don't know really how much, how legitimate all of it is, but some people are getting opportunities. Uh, Mark, Marcus Sasser in particular, he's had six assists yeah. in three of the last four games. Even Evan, we've had a, a sighting on Evan Fournier. who's been getting 20 minutes the last four games and had one game where he had 18 hit four three. So 
Um, Detroit is, you know, a team that you might want to just look at when it comes to streams, although they don't play that Tuesday, Thursday, uh, Saturday matchups. Uh, just something to keep an eye on. Mo Bamba uh, right now starting for the 76ers, and he's been getting some stocks. Uh, nine points, five boards, two assists, almost two threes, two steals, two blocks. Categories league, um, he's at least – Somebody you should look at. Uh, Lakers hit two and three, and Miami had two and two. That's, you know, steals first, blocks second. So five stocks and four stocks uh, in both of those games. And give me a little, little bit of everything except for points, pretty much. James, do you know the Mo Bamba song, though, right? Yes, I know that one. You got me. All right, finally. <laughs> I haven't been living under a rock too much. Uh, you know, for as much as Philly has been tanking, they have been trying different lineups. And it seems like Paul Reed is permanently coming off the bench now. And Mo Bamba is going to be that starter. I mean, James, I don't have too much to add from there. I will say uh, 32 minutes last game. Maybe that's something that you see a little bit more moving forward. Uh, and, and once again, just, you know, for those going into the semifinals and finals of their fantasy matchups, like you just got to pay attention closely to these trends. And, you know, me and James are just trying to give you some guys that, have been doing well recently that should be at the top of your ad list. I got a trivia question for you. All right. All right. 76ers. I'll, I'll help you out. There's a hint. There's a player who has basically played every game in the last seven seasons. He's missed like 30 in that time frame. He hasn't taken one charge in those seven seasons. Who is, is it, it? Kelly Oubre? Nope. Well, Kelly Oubre missed some time this year. Um, uh, he plays on the 76ers now. Durability. Durability. Big, I'm trying to, big, I don't, I big can't contract. Say I oh, Tobias Harris. Yeah, Tobias. How do you not take I, a I charge see that. Seven I could see that. I could see that. Tobias ain't taking charges. He's, yeah. he's he's kind of frail for his build. Uh, I like him as a fantasy option, though. I've I've been known to get him and draft him. I know he's that been he's better kind of a, this year. He's, he's a been safe, better this year. He's a safe pick. Uh, so shout out to any Toby owners out there because um you could go with the other options and uh, it's either going to work out for you they're going to do better or they're going to do work but he's pretty safe yeah but he's yeah. not somebody that you're adding no which uh -huh. is strictly our show <laughs> well that's all we have for you this week good luck if uh if you're still with us we'll do one more show again this might be championship week so you know you know you, you might not be there with us. Good luck to everybody that is still rolling. We'd love to do this. It's been three years running. We're going to come back next year. And You hear it first, everyone. James says he's coming back next year. We yeah. Had a, he, had, he had a player option uh, on his contract, so we're going to hold him to it. And I got a championship coming in three weeks in the form of a baby girl. That's how so you hear it, news, baby. Yeah, baby. So, you know, my son, he'll be two years old in May and this whole process. And I remember, you know, pre two baby. But yeah, I'm going to be a girl dad, dad of two coming soon. So that's my championship of life. Whether I win fantasy or not, that's irrelevant. It's all about bringing in uh, this new bundle of joy to the Perfectly world. said, so. put it in perspective as someone that stresses out about fantasy more than the average person. Uh, it takes it back. It takes a back seat to the things in real life. So, that being said, good luck. We're here to help you, but you know, there's bigger things than fantasy championships, unless it's beating James. That's a pretty big thing up on the list. Yeah, we'll see. We'll keep you updated. Shout out all the dads out there in the universe, and um, tune into that March Madness. We'll talk to you. See you next week. Peace.